Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside the Birds TV presented by DraftKings. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan. And joining us today is someone who's going to help us break down a very exciting Eagles draft pick. The Birds used a fifth rounder on explosive running back Kenneth Gainwell. And here to tell us more about him is Gainwell's college coach. We're talking about University of Memphis head football coach, Ryan Silverfield. Ryan, we know how busy you are building Memphis into a very exciting winning program. So we really thank you for taking some time to be with us. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, obviously, happy to talk to Eagles fans about uh, Kenneth Gainwell, wonderful running back. Uh, they can do a lot for them that I know the fan base will be quite excited about. And uh, obviously, the many running backs we have in the NFL. Yes, we're very excited to talk about Kenneth and this pipeline now from Memphis. Uh, first, we're going to tell our, our listeners to download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB when you sign up, and you can turn $5 into $200 in free credits when you bet on the basketball team of your choice to win its next game. That's promo code ITB with the download uh, with the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. So, so let's get into Kenneth Gainwell. Um, you know, we here in Philadelphia have a pretty high standard for the dual threat running back going back to Deuce Staley, to Brian Westbrook, to Shady McCoy, to now Miles Sanders, right? So there, there's a pretty high standard here for guys uh, who can run and catch the ball at the same time. So, so let us know what we're getting in Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, you nailed it right on the head by saying that uh, dual threat. I mean, that's exactly what the young man is. Uh, he fits that mold of those great Eagle running backs you just mentioned. And that's a wonderful thing about him is he is not just a back in the backfield guy that can just, you know, that you're going to hand the ball to all the time. I mean, he can catch the ball out of the backfield as good as some of these running backs I've seen uh, throughout my time. You know, he can be lined up as a wide receiver. He's got the skill set, unique skill set to do so many different things. And I think that's what's so special about the young man, right? You talk to some of these scouts and these GMs uh, leading up to the draft and, and these coaches, and they said, well, man, we've, we've, what is, what's so unique about him, I said, is receiving skill set. He can make catches. If you watch some of these games, the SMU, the two lane game where he makes some of these catches on the sideline, uh, puts his body in different positions, fantastic hands. Just a great, great skill set. And like you said, he is a dual threat back. And then you can line him up in the backfield where it's under center and hand him the ball. Uh, we run a variety of different schemes here, and a lot of them are NFL-type run game schemes. Uh, so he'll fit nicely in the Eagles backfield. So, Ryan, you're, you just mentioned it. Your experience as a, as a not only a college head coach, but you as designing the run game. I know you worked the NFL for the Vikings and for a long time and also the Lions. So is this kind of what your thought process was in 2019? You get Kenny Gamewell in. He was a redshirt freshman. He had 282 touches. He's not the biggest guy in the world. So did you take your experience as a coach and say, okay, this is what I see from this guy, and this is what he could be? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, you have a playmaker of that ability in college football, and even in the NFL, you have to find ways to get them the football. You know, is he Adrian Peterson that we have with the Vikings? No, he's not, but he's got a unique skill set in the backfield running the football uh, and then we said, okay, how do we get him the ball in different manners, right? Whether it's lining up an empty, lining him up as a wide receiver, or lining him up, uh, you know, in a normal in a normal set, you know, he's in the backfield and being able to catch the ball in the backfield, whether it's screens, uh, wet rail routes, all those different things that he's capable of doing, right? Hand the ball off, running pin and pull schemes, power schemes, inside zone, outside zone. He's capable of all those things. And I don't think you sit there and say, okay, this is all he can be. And this is all he can do. And so, uh, that's why he had the number of touches he did. And, you know, for him that didn't play much as a true freshman to redshirt and then come as a redshirt freshman, be the conference freshman of the year uh, in the AAC, a good conference. Um, I think it just speaks volumes about what he is capable of doing. I think you're going to see a lot of that uh, shine brightly at the next level. So um, he opted out, obviously, of 2020. So you haven't seen him on the field in a year. But I'm, uh, if he were had to have played and everything would be normal, how what area of development would you have seen most within your offense and how would you kind of tailored the offense around it? Yeah, I think it's just like with any young running back, right? That maturation process, you're going to see year in, year out, whether it's college football or the NFL. And it always goes back to right to protections and seeing them in the backfield. Like I said, I don't believe necessarily the Eagles will line up in, in third and 10 and put them in the backfield and ask them in a six man throw to sit back there and take on linebackers. But they might and he's capable, he's willing to. Uh, but I think that process of understanding protections and doing those different things, whatever you, whatever else you may ask. And I think the development for him also is going to be on special teams. Um, you know, if he's not your starting running back, there's different things. But 
Uh, he'll continue to improve as a route runner, right? Just lining him up strictly as a wide receiver. Uh, if you're in 20 personnel or 21 personnel where you have, you know, two running back types, uh, not necessarily just a two fullback, but two running back types on the field, uh, those things that he'll be able to do. And I think you're going to be able to see that improvement. But he's a guy that is going to be coming in fresh, right? You know, there's some advantages to not having the wear and tear on some of these guys. We've seen some of these guys that come from college football that have, you know, have had 600 catches out of college and, you know, what's the tread life on them? You know, yeah, we know the average NFL running back lasts uh, less than three years. But he's a guy that's going to come in fresh, very roll, uh, injury-free, and excited to get going. And, Ryan, you guys used him as an X receiver. I mean, you kind of moved him everywhere in 19. Did you know that when you recruited him to Memphis that he could do those things, or did you kind of learn that in practice? Well, you know, we knew he was a dynamic type player. He's from a small town, uh, Mississippi, Wazoo County. Um, and I went and watched him practice one day. Uh, you know, he actually was a quarterback in high school. Uh, we watched some of that stuff. And uh, I don't think the Eagles will be asking him to throw the ball too often, uh, unless it's some trick play stuff. But he's certainly capable. But you just saw that, that skill set, his movement ability. He's so quick to twitch. Um, you just knew that he was that type of guy you had to get on the field. And I think, you know, as you progress, you say, okay, what do we have? And if you look at who he shared the backfield with uh, in 2019, you had Antonio Gibson, who Antonio Gibson actually came here as a junior college wide receiver. And we really didn't know what we had Antonio Gibson until uh, Patrick Taylor, who's with the Green Bay Packers, um, you, you know, was actually the starting running back and got hurt the first game of the year versus Ole Miss. And so then you were able to start putting guys in different positions. Um, you, know, you talk about you have three NFL running backs on that roster. So it's like, hey, where can we put this guy and how is he going to fit what we want to do? All right, I want to ask you a little bit more about him as a, as a person. First, I want to tell our, our viewers to stop paying full retail price for the things you want. Get on Deal Dash. It's DealDash.com or download the app. It's the uh, largest online shopping platform out there. When you register, use the promo code ITB for a special offer for some bonus free bids. So tell us about Kenny, the person, because I know he impressed people in his first press conference. Um, he definitely knew a lot about the city, which always endears people from around here. They like to know that people are paying attention to them from, from uh, other areas of the country. Yeah, so Kenny's a, a fantastic young man. I know off the field issues, cares greatly about the game of football and uh, the way he carries himself on and off the field. I think the fans of Philadelphia will love him because uh, he's got that smile. He cares about everything. He's going to be a presence on and off the field in the community. You know, a unique thing is uh, when we actually played Temple a few years ago, him and I were talking the night before in the hotel, he, the young man mentioned to me, he said, you know, Coach, it's always been my dream. Uh, my favorite team has been the Philadelphia Eagles, and now I get the opportunity to play in, in their stadium versus Temple as a Memphis Tiger. And it, man, it's a dream come true. And then, you know, lo and behold, uh, the Eagles drafted him, and I was just it, it made my heart warm because here's a kid that's getting to fulfill his – lifelong dream of playing for his, his favorite team of all time. Um, so the fans will endear to him. He's very prideful. He cares a lot. Uh, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder, and he's going to go out there and do great things. Ryan, leading up to the draft, did the Eagles or any team in particular show a lot of interest? Because I know sometimes teams will gather information, they'll call or they'll visit. And we know with the COVID issue, there were was, there was certain limitations. But did, did Philly uh, show any particular interest before the draft? Yeah, you know, it was probably no different than the other team. I, you know, all 32 teams called about him, talked about him. We had every team present at the pro day. Um, you could tell there was some interest there, but I wouldn't sit there and say, Adam, that it was uniquely different um, to some. I, I got calls um, during the draft, you know, with guys reconfirming and asking. And, you know, and, and some of those calls started, you know, in the second round, uh, just saying, hey, we're thinking if this, if this is happening, we may do this. You know, just with the different connections and knowing different people. And then, but uh, look, I was just glad he got drafted. But I wouldn't sit here and say that he was uh, sought after, you know, that I had an inkling that that's where he may go. I knew that it was certainly a possibility uh, given his skill set and what they like to do in the backfield as well. So, Ryan, everybody who, who follows Inside the Birds knows Adam's a Temple guy. I'm a Penn State guy. And you guys really came on my radar a couple of years ago when. For a while there in the Cotton Bowl, you guys were taking it to us with Antonio Gibson, who's now obviously with Washington. And I've seen what, what Antonio – and that was your first game as a head coach. You can go into that in a second. But between Antonio Gibson, um, Tony Pollard with Dallas, right, and now Kenny Gainwell, what, what's going on here? We have a Memphis <laughs> dual threat running back factory. Are you guys now dual threat running back you? 
Yeah, well, first off, I probably shouldn't be talking to you guys because those were the only two games we lost in 2019 at Temple. I didn't want to bring State, it up. So, yeah, so there's some bad luck here. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to change that luck. Um, you know, obviously, we're fortunate to get Temple this year, Adam, but I won't rub it in. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Well, I'd like to play Penn State again sometime. Uh, that's not certainly not a challenge, but it'd be it'd be me oh. playing in a, in a good bowl game. <laughs> oh. Uh, but Coach Frank has done a heck of a job there. But I digress, and we'll get back to what you're saying. I mean, look, you you just mentioned some of these great dual threat running backs, right? I mean, Tony Pollard is that unique skill set, and that's kind of where we kind of discovered that role of what this could be with that position, where we can move guys, right? And let's not forget Daryl Henderson. I mean, Daryl Henderson yeah. for the, the for the Rams averaged eight point nine yards a carry, so almost nine yards a carry for two years, right. two straight years in college football. Nine yards a carry, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And this whole time, a guy named Patrick Taylor had been the starting running back. So we had all these guys who were able to move around. Uh, we've got five running backs in the NFL. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll proudly stamp us as running back you, and hopefully we can continue that tradition. Sure. I mean, you've got Anthony Miller, the wide receiver, right? And, um, you know, Don Terry Poe, I think, is still hung, hanging around. So Memphis is, is making – certainly been making its name for itself lately. Yeah, we've had – you know, the last eight years we've led the conference. You know, we've had a draft pick every year. Um, you know, we're going to continue that matter, right? I mean – it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's a, a nice deal. We've been fortunate to have, whether it's a freshman All-American, All-American, uh, every single year um, since I've been here. I certainly don't take great credit. we got great players and great coaching staff and those that came before me. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool thing. And, it, you know, the NFL is taking notice. And fortunate that uh, people want to come here and play, and we're, we got a lot of good young men. And it's awesome to see those guys in the NFL and have this success. And, Look, I'd be happy next year we have this conversation. I say, now we got six running backs. That'd be a good thing. <laughs> well, that's the next question. What's your running game look like there at Memphis this season? Yeah, well, we've got – look, we've got – this past year, uh, we were running back by committee. Uh, we started a walk-on versus Navy. Um, you know, look, I'll call it what it is. Losing Kenny Gainwell before the season uh, put a damper on some things. But, you know, a lot of our young men stepped up. Uh, we like our backfield. Uh, we're going to continue to – plug and play and figure out who we got back there. But, you know, uh, as I, do you guys know anything about people from Memphis? And it's kind of that same mentality as Philadelphia, right? We're, we're a, a tough minded blue collar group. That's uh, it's us versus everybody. Um, the grit and grind city. And uh, that's how our players carry this, themselves the same way. Well, you mentioned next year, I think we're going to have to have you back on coach. Hopefully we can get you on to talk about not only your success, but also Kenny Gainwell having a, a great rookie year for the Eagles. That would just be a, you know, a little icing on the cake for all of us here. So hopefully we can have you back on down the road soon. We thank you so much for joining us to talk about Kenny. I know that the city is very excited to see what he can do, as I mentioned, given the standard that's been set here. Yeah, well, look, we can't also forget those other Eagles you guys have. Uh, you guys got a couple other Memphis Tiger Eagles. Now we got three of them. So I may have to make a trip up to Philadelphia in the off season, <laughs> get some good food with you guys, see the city and go visit our three Memphis Tigers that are now Eagles. So I'm an Eagles fan. Uh, you know, take care of our guys, our Memphis Tigers up there. And I appreciate you guys having me on. You yeah. got it. All right. Make sure you see our friends at Sky Motor Cars. You'll get a great deal on a trade in. You'll get more money than anybody else can give you. Visit them at skymotorcars.com. Big thanks again to Ryan Silverfield, head coach of University of Memphis. And of course, we will look forward to talking to him again down the road and seeing how Kenny Gainwell does in the midnight green. So for Ryan Silverfield and Adam Kaplan, I'm Jeff Mosher. Thanks for watching. ITB TV.